Hey, this is Marius Perone with the Audio Engineering Institute. Today we're going to talk about acoustic treatment of home studios. My friend Brian Duncan is one of the best MIDI programmers in the world. Recently, he moved from Nashville to San Antonio and bought a new house here. He put his studio in a second floor bedroom. The room looked nice, but the acoustics of the room were terrible. He bought some of these maroon colored acoustic panels and put them on the walls of the room, but that simply wasn't enough absorption to make the room sound better. This video is going to show you how he fixed the acoustics. The dimensions of the room are 13 feet 9 and 1 quarter inches wide, 12 feet long, and 8 feet in height. The walls were painted sheetrock. To help with the acoustics of a room like this, you need to add a lot of absorption. Now, if you go to the music store and ask a salesman for some acoustic treatment, he'll try to sell you some RLX foam. Well, this stuff doesn't really work very well and it's kind of pricey. Folks that really know about acoustic treatment usually use what's called rigid compressed fiberglass board. The most popular type of rigid fiberglass is made by Owens Corning and is called 703 board. This comes in sheets that are 2 feet by 4 feet. The thickness can be anywhere from 1 inch to 4 inches. I have used Owens Corning for years, but recently I found an alternate product made by a company called Knopf that has better absorption specifications and it's cheaper. It also has less chemical emissions in the indoor air. In other words, you don't have to worry about breathing in your studio when you install this stuff. What I used for Brian's room is called Knopf Insulation Board with Ecos technology. It's two inches thick and has a density of three pounds per cubic foot. This shows the absorption specifications. The board comes three ways. Plain, which means it is uncovered on both sides, or it's faced with thin white plastic on one side, which they call ASJ facing, or with a facing of thin aluminum foil, which they call FSK. I liked the way the specs looked for the FSK, so we went with that. Here's a chart that shows a comparison of the Owens Corning product and the Knopf product. Knopf has better low frequency absorption and costs less. We bought 24 of these panels in San Antonio from a company called Distribution International. Total cost of the 24 panels was $258. Brian had his equipment set up in the north side of the room, so this is the area where we needed to concentrate the absorption. I decided to build a wooden frame near the ceiling to hold our acoustic panels. It is constructed out of 2x2 two two lumber. We assembled the frame in two separate parts in his garage. Then we mounted it in his studio 8 inches from the ceiling. Once it was up there, we were able to stack three of the two-inch panels on top of each other for a total thickness of six inches. The thicker the material, the better it's going to soak up low frequencies. And low frequencies are the hard things to trap. Notice that we put the aluminum foil side up. If it was facing downward, it might cause high-frequency reflections. I designed this frame kind of like a grid. In the back part of the frame, those 2 by 2s are spaced exactly 2 feet apart on center. In the front part of the frame, I built that with the 2 by 2s spaced exactly 4 feet apart on center. I built it like this so that the acoustic panels could just lay right on top of the 2 by 2s After I was done with my work, Brian bought some black muslin cloth and stretched it over small pieces of wood, kind of like you would make a canvas, 
stretched over a wooden frame. And after he had that cloth on the frames, he put that on the ceiling to cover up the fiberglass that was up there. And now that the fiberglass has been installed for a week or so, Brian called to tell me that the room sounds amazing. Rather than hearing all the resonances in the room, he's able to hear exactly what he's programming. And it makes listening in that room much more pleasurable. <laughs> 